Welcome back, dear friends, to the Crimson Academy's course on the Kitab Iran. In this section, we're covering paragraphs 107 through 109 of the Kitab Iran. In these paragraphs, His Holiness Baha'u'llah describes the relationship between the reality of God, the manifestations of God, and humans. By using the analogy of a mirror, Baha'u'llah describes the manifestations of God as the primal mirrors who reflect perfectly the attributes and names of God. All else besides them reflect merely the glory of the manifestations of God according to their capacity. Some following key points in these paragraphs. God has shed one of his names and attributes on every created thing. God has engraved all his names and attributes on every human being. The knowledge of the manifestations of God and self-knowledge lead to a knowledge of God. In the midst of humanity, the manifestations of God have the station of primal mirrors since they reflect a perfect image of God. And humanity receives the glory of God through the manifestations of God. In paragraph 107, His Holiness Baha'u'llah explains that all the attributes and names of God are revealed to man to a degree unparalleled in any other created thing. In the hidden words, Baha'u'llah provides a deeper insight into the nature of this process. O son of man, veiled in my immor immorial being and in the ancient eternity of my essence, I knew my love for thee. Therefore I created thee have engraved on thee mine image and revealed to thee my beauty. This is from the Hidden Words, Arabic number 3. This quotation from Baha'u'llah states that man as a concept was concealed within the essence of God. God was aware of his love for man. Hence, he brought the concept to reality by creating man. In this process, God conferred his image on man and manifested his beauty within him. The image of an object is a reflection of its attributes. Accordingly, God bestowed his bounties, splendors, and attributes on man. These are the capacities and gifts we are born with and are expected to cultivate during our physical life. Baha'u'llah addresses this topic further. Upon the inmost reality of each and every created thing, He, God, have shed the light of one of His names and made it a recipient of the glory of one of His attributes. Upon the reality of man, however, He have focused the radiance of all of His names and attributes and made it a mirror of His own self. And this, friends, is from Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah, page 65. The presence of such capacities within human reality is not an assurance that they will be realized during the lifetime of an individual. Baha'u'llah compares their presence to the flame that is hidden within the candle and the rays of light that are potentially present in the lamp. The radiance of these energies may be obscured by worldly desires even as the light of the sun can be concealed beneath the dust and dross which cover the mirror. And again, friends, this is from Baha'u'llah, Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah, page 65. As highlighted earlier, the knowledge of God is the knowledge of His attributes. The manifestations of God are the perfect mirrors that reflect those attributes. At the same time, these attributes are engraved in the reality of every human being. Hence, the knowledge of the manifestations of God and the knowledge of the spiritual capacities and potentials within us 
known as self-knowledge, both lead ultimately to a knowledge of God. In paragraph 107, Baha'u'llah cites two hadith and three verses from the Quran to further illustrate these concepts. Man is my mystery and I am his mystery. This hadith of Qudsi refers to the greatness of the human station. The first part of the hadith underlines the mystical and supernatural nature of human reality, whereas the second part emphasizes human inability to comprehend God. We will surely show them our signs in the world and within themselves. And friends, this is from Quran chapter 41, verse 53. This verse of the Quran indicates that we can observe the signs of God within the world of creation as well as within ourselves. And also in your own selves, will ye not then behold the signs of God? And this is from Quran chapter 51 verse 21. This verse of the Quran illustrates a concept similar to to the earlier paragraphs. And be ye not like those who forget, and whom he hath therefore caused to forget their own selves. And this, friends, is from Quran, chapter 59, verse 19. This verse highlights again the connection between the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self by indicating that one will forget self if one forgets God. He hath known God who hath known himself. The self in this verse is the identity of an individual as created by God. And this is from the beloved guardian, letter written on his behalf in Compilation of Compilations, Volume 1, page 74. This is a hadith narrated from Ali the son-in-law of Muhammad, Baha'u'llah, has given Ali the title of eternal king in this paragraph. As highlighted in the previous section, self-knowledge can lead to a knowledge of God. There are two statements from Baha'u'llah that shed some light on the nature of the process that leads to self-knowledge. Whatever duty thou hast prescribed unto thy servants, of extolling to the utmost thy majesty and glory, is but a token of thy grace unto them, that they may be enabled to ascend unto the station conferred upon their inmost being, the station of the knowledge of their own selves. This is from Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah, pages 4 through 5. And the second states, O my servants, could ye apprehend with what wonders of my munificence and bounty I have willed to entrust your souls, ye would of a truth rid yourselves of attachment to all created things, and would gain a true knowledge of your own selves a knowledge which is the same as the comprehension of my own being. And this is from Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah, pages 326 through 327. According to the first statement, we are enabled to attain self-knowledge when we receive a token of the grace of God. We receive this grace when we observe the twin duties, namely, the recognition of the manifestation of God and obedience to the laws and ordinances revealed by Him. Hence, the process of self-knowledge cannot occur without recognizing the manifestation of God, which is the path to a knowledge of God. In the second statement, Baha'u'llah highlights another dimension in this process. Attaining the twin duties of recognition and obedience will result in our spiritual transformation and a realization of the bounties that Baha'u'llah has conferred upon our soul. 
This will enable us to become detached from the material world. Such detachment is instrumental in developing a true knowledge of ourselves. This is the knowledge that is the same as the knowledge of God. When we are truly transformed, we are able to lead other people to a knowledge of their true selves and the purpose for which they were created and thus to their greatest happiness and highest good. And this, friends, is from Shore Effendi, High Endeavors, page 7. This will be a significant contribution to humanity since the majority of people are so blinded by desires and so misled that they have brought upon themselves all the suffering we see at present in the world. And this is from the beloved guardian in High Endeavors, page 7, and cited in Lights of Guidance, page 113. In paragraph 109, Baha'u'llah re-emphasizes that, according to their capacity, all things reflect and reveal the names and attributes of God within their own reality. However, the revelation of the Bab was so potent and universal that it hath encompassed all things, visible and invisible. Baha'u'llah then cites a number of hadith to illustrate such potency. Hath aught else save thee a power of revelation, which is not possessed by thee, that it could have manifested thee? Blind is the eye which doth not perceive thee. This is an extract from a prayer known as the prayer of the day of Arafah by Imam Hussein, the second Imam of Shia Islam. And this is from Ishraq Khabari's Khamusi Yaghan in Farsi, volume 1, page 221. No thing have I perceived except that I perceive God within it, God before it, or God after it. This hadith is narrated from Imam Ali. And behold, a light hath shone forth out of the morn of eternity, and lo, its waves were penetrated by the inmost reality of all men. This is a famous hadith narrated by Kumail. Ibn Ziyad Nahai from Imam Ali. And that is, this is also quoted from Ishraq Qabari's Ramusi Yaghan in Farsi, volume 2, page 781. Kumail was one of the close companions of Imam Ali, who was killed by the enemies of Ali because of, his, because of his love for Ali and his steadfastness. The hadith states that the light of God has penetrated into the reality of all men. Baha'u'llah then specifies that the human is endowed with the highest degree of God's attributes amongst creatures. According to Abdul Baha, man is the highest work of creation and the nearest to God of all creatures. And this is uh, Abdul Baha in Paris Talks, page 24. Of all humans, the manifestations of God are the most perfect. They are the primal mirrors who reflect the light of God in utmost exactness. Through their manifestation, all the names and attributes of God, such as knowledge and power, sovereignty and dominion, mercy and wisdom, glory, bounty and grace are revealed. In describing this concept, Abdul Baha states, Man, therefore, on the plane of the contingent world, is the most perfect being. By man is meant the perfect individual who is like unto a mirror in which the divine perfections are manifested and reflected. But the sun doth not descend into the mirror, but when the latter is purified and turned towards the sun of truth, the perfections of this sun, consisting of light and heat, are reflected and manifested in that mirror. These souls are the divine manifestations of God.
And friends, this is from Abdul Baha, Selections from the Writings of Abdul Baha, page 61. Abdul Baha refers to the manifestations of God as the perfect man, and the one who has the purity and clearness of a perfect mirror, one who reflects the Son of Truth. And this is Abdul Baha in Abdul Baha in London, page 23. Abdul Baha also states, the perfect soul of man, that is to say, the perfect individual is like a mirror wherein the sun of reality is reflected. These mirrors are the messengers of God who tell the story of divinity, just as the material mirror reflects the light and disk of the outer sun in the skies. In this way, the image and effulgence of the sun of reality appear in the mirrors of the manifestations of God. And this is from Abdul Baha in the Promulgation of Universal Peace, page 173. Baha'u'llah calls the manifestations of God the primary or primal mirrors, since they are the first receivers of the glory of God. We humans receive the glory of God indirectly, that is, through His manifestations. All else besides them are to be regarded as mirrors capable of reflecting the glory of these manifestations. This was from Baha'u'llah, Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah, page 74. And to live by the operation of their will. Baha'u'llah cites the Hadith. But for thee, I would have not created the heavens to highlight the significance of the manifestations of God in his creation. This is a famous hadith, the Qudsi, about Muhammad, who has been referred to as La Alaka, Arabic for, but for thee, by God, Muhammad was mentioned as the cause and reason for the creation of the heavens. Thank you, dear friends.